In the last video, you learned how to work with JSON inside of Node.js. And as we know, this is the exact format we're gonna be using for the notes application. When you first run a command, we'll load in all the notes that might already exist. Then we'll run the command, whether it's adding, removing, or reading notes. And finally, if we've updated the array, like we will when we add and remove notes, we're gonna save that new notes back into the JSON file. Now this is all gonna happen inside of add note, the function we defined in notes.js. And we already wired up this function. In the past, we ran the app add command and this function executed with the title and body arguments. Since we already have that wired up, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the console.log statement and we can start filling this one out. To get started, the first thing I wanna do is create a variable called notes. And for the moment, we're gonna set it equal to an empty array just like this using our square brackets. Now that we have the empty array, we can go ahead and make a variable called note, which is the individual note. This is gonna represent the new note. On that note, we're gonna have the two properties you probably already expected, a title and a body. Now title can get set equal to the title variable, but as we know, inside of ES6, we can simply remove it when both values are the same. Title and body right here. Now we have the note and we have the notes array. The next step in the process is gonna to be to add the note to the notes array. Notes dot push is gonna let us do just that. The push method on an array lets you pass in an item which gets added to the end of the array. And in this case, we're gonna pass in the note object. So we have an empty array. We add our one item and now we push it in, which means we have an array with one item. The next step in the process is gonna to be to update the file. Now we don't have a file in place, but we can load in FS and start creating one. Up above, let's go ahead and load in FS. I'm gonna create a const called FS and set it equal to the return result from require. And we're gonna require the FS module, which is a core node module. So there is no need to install it using NPM. And with this in place, we can take advantage of FS down inside of add note. Right after we push our item onto the notes array, we're going to call fs.write file sync, which we've used before. We know we need to pass in two things, the file name. I'm gonna call this one notes-data.json. And then we're gonna pass in the content we wanna save, which in this case is gonna be the stringified notes array, which means we can call json.stringify. Passing in notes. Now we could have broken this out into its own variable and referenced the variable here, but since we're only gonna be using it in one place, I find this is the better solution. Now at this point, when we add a new note, it's gonna update the notes data JSON file, which will be created on the machine since it does not exist and the note will sit inside of it. Now it's important to note currently, every time you add a new note, it's gonna wipe all existing ones because we never load in the existing ones. But we can get started testing that this works as expected. I'm gonna save the file and over inside of the terminal, we can run this using node app.js. Since we wanna add a note, we are gonna be using that add command, which we set up. Then we're gonna specify our title and our body. The title can get set equal to something like secret. And for the body, I'm gonna go ahead and set it equal to the string some body here. Excellent. Now, when we run this command from the terminal, we're gonna see what we'd expect. A couple of the file commands we added, we see the command add was executed and we have our yargs arguments right here. Everything looks great. The title and the body do show up. Back inside of Adam, we also see we have a new notes hyphen data dot JSON file. And right here we have our note with the title secret and the body some body here. And this is fantastic. This is the first step in wiring up that add note function. We have an existing notes file and we do wanna take advantage of these notes. If notes already exist, we don't wanna simply wipe them every time someone adds a new note. That means up above at the beginning of the add note function, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and fetch those notes. I'm actually gonna do it right here below where I define the notes and note variable. Inside of here, we're gonna use fs.readfilesync, which we've already explored. This is gonna take the file name, in our case, notes-data.json. Now we are gonna to wanna to store the return value from read file sync on a variable. I'm gonna call that variable notes string. 
Since this is the string version, we haven't passed it through json.parse. Then down below, I can set notes, the variable we defined up above, equal to the return value from json.parse. json.parse is going to take the string from the file we read, and it's going to parse it into an array. Right here, we can pass in notes string just like this. Awesome. With this in place, adding a new note is no longer going to remove all of the notes that were already there. We have a note with a title of secret and a body of some body here. I'm going to use the up arrow key to load in the last command, and I'm going to navigate over to the title and change it to secret2 and rerun the command. This time around, you can see we now have two notes inside of our file. We have an array with two objects. The first one has the title of secret, and the second one has the title of secret2, which is brilliant. Now, there is a problem here. If the notes data file does not exist, which it won't when the user first runs the command, I'm going to go ahead and delete it to show you what happens, the program is going to crash. We can prove this by simply rerunning the last command after deleting the note data.json file. Right here, you can see we're actually getting a JavaScript error. No such file or directory exists. It's trying to open up the notes data.json file, but without much success. To fix this, we're going to use a try catch statement from JavaScript, which hopefully you've seen in the past. If you haven't, we're going to go over it really quick. To create a try catch, all you do is you type try, which is a reserved keyword, and then you open and close a set of curly braces. Inside of here is the code that you're going to run. This is the code that may or may not throw an error. Down below, you're going to specify the catch block. Now, the catch block is going to take an argument, an error argument, and it also has a code block that runs. This code is going to run if and only if one of your errors in try actually occurs. So if we load the file using read file sync and the file exists, that's fine. Catch is never going to run. If it fails, catch will run and we can do something to recover from that error. With this in place, all we're going to do is move these two lines into try. That's it. Nothing else needs to happen. We don't need to put any code in catch, although you do need to define the catch block. Now let's take a look at what happens. The first thing that happens is we create our static variables, nothing special there. Then we try to load in the file. If this fails, that is fine because we already defined notes to be an empty array. And if the file doesn't exist and it fails, then we probably want an empty array for notes anyways, because clearly there are no notes. There's no file. Next up, we're going to parse that data into notes. There is a chance this fails if there's invalid data in the notes-data.json file. So these two lines, they could have problems. And by putting them in try catch, we're basically guaranteeing that the program isn't going to work unexpectedly, even if the file doesn't exist, or if it does exist, but it contains corrupted data. With this in place, we can now save notes and rerun that last command. Note, I do not have the notes data file in place. When I run the command, we don't see any errors. Everything seems to run as expected. And when I visit Adam, you can see the notes data file does indeed exist, and the data inside of it looks great. This is all we need to do to fetch the notes, update the notes with the new note, and finally save the notes to the screen. Now, there is still a slight problem with add note. Currently, add note, it allows for duplicate titles. I could already have a note in the JSON file with the title of secret, I could come along and try to add a new note with the title of a secret, and it's not going to throw an error. What I'd like to do is make the title unique. So if there's already a note with that title, it's going to throw an error, letting you know to create a note with a different title. The first step to that process is going to be to loop through all of the notes after we load them in and check if there are any duplicates. If there are duplicates, we're not going to call these two lines. If there is no duplicates, then it's fine. We will call both of these lines, updating the notes data file. Now we're going to be refactoring this function down the line. Things are getting a little wonky and a little out of control. But for the moment, we can add this functionality right into the function. Let's go ahead and make a variable called duplicate notes. Duplicate notes is going to eventually store an array with all of the notes that already exist inside of the notes array that have the title of the note you're trying to create. Now, this means if the duplicate notes array has any items, that's bad. That means the note already exists and we should not add the note. This is going to get set equal to a call to notes, which is our array of notes dot filter. 
Filter is an array method that takes a callback. We're going to use an arrow function. And that callback is going to get called with the argument. In this case, it's going to be the singular version. If I have an array of notes, it's going to get called with an individual note. This function gets called once for every item in the array. And you have the opportunity to return either true or false. If you return true, it's going to keep that item in the array, which will eventually get saved into duplicate notes. If you return false, the new array it generates, it's not going to have that item inside of it. All we want to do is return true if the titles match, which means we can return if note.title triple equals title. If they are equal, then this is going to result in true and the item will be kept in the array, which means there are duplicate notes. If the titles are not equal, which is most likely the case, it's going to result in false and duplicate notes will be empty. Now we can simplify this a little more using arrow functions. Arrow functions actually allow you to remove the curly braces if you simply have one statement like we do here. I'm going to go ahead and copy this statement to the clipboard, excluding the return keyword and the semicolon. Then what I'm going to do is delete everything from the closing curly brace to the opening curly brace. Right here, I can paste in my statement. This is perfectly valid using ES6 arrow functions. You have your arguments on the left, you have your arrow, and on the right, you have one expression. The expression doesn't take a semicolon and it's automatically returned as the function result. This means the code we have here is identical to the code we had earlier, only it's much simpler and it only takes up one line. Now that we have this in place, we can go ahead and check the length of duplicate notes. If the length of duplicate notes is greater than zero, that means we don't want to save the note because a note already exists with that title. If it is zero, we're going to go ahead and save the note. If duplicate notes dot length is equal to zero. Here inside of the if condition, we're comparing the notes length with the number zero. If they are equal, then we do want to go ahead and push the note onto the notes array and save the file. I'm going to cut these two lines and paste them right inside of the if statement. If they're not equal, that's okay too. In that case, we're going to go ahead and do nothing. With this in place, we can now save our file and test this functionality out. We have our notes data file, and it already has a note with a title of secret2. Let's rerun the last command to try to add a new note with that same title. We run the command, we head back into our JSON file, and you can see right here we still just have one note. And this is fantastic. Now all of the titles inside of our application are going to be unique, so we can use these titles to fetch notes and delete notes. Let's go ahead and test real quick that other notes can still be added. I'm going to change the title from secret2 to secret, run that command, and over here inside of our notes data file, you can see both notes show up, which is awesome. And that is it for this video. In this one, we filled out the add note function. As I mentioned, we are going to be doing some refactoring since this code which loads the file, and this code which saves the file, they're going to be used in most of the functions down below. But for now, everything works great. We're able to add notes using the command line, and we're able to save those notes into a JSON file. That is it for this one. I will see you next time where we do that refactoring. From there, we'll be able to quickly fill out get all, get note, and remove note, because we'll have those reusable functions that we can take advantage of. See ya soon.